Hello, everybody. Let's talk about Stream Insight in SQL Server 2012. My name is Torsten Grabs, and I'm a lead program manager on the Stream Insight team in the SQL Server division. Let's have a quick look at um, what's new in Stream Insight. What are the different features that we included into the latest version of Stream Insight? So Stream Insight um, delivers a new version in SQL Server 2012. And the main features that we added are, first of all, resiliency to protect you against outages. The second uh, big improvement is around the developer experience, where we added a couple of features to make it easier for you to develop your Stream Insight applications. The third area of investment is in the area of manageability, where we added a couple of features to make it easier for you to monitor and troubleshoot your Stream Insight applications in production. And the last improvement that we made is around latency, so you can get results more quickly from your Stream Insight application when deploying it with SQL Server 2012. So let's look at these different areas in more detail. The first area that I want to touch on is resiliency to outages. So let's have a look at the various different details. First of all, the goal of resiliency is to make your Stream Insight applications highly available. Highly available means it protects you against planned downtime or unplanned outages of your application. A goal in that context is also to recover from those out outages as quickly as possible. Now, recall that Stream Insight actually does not store the event data, but it stores the state of the query. And that state can be very valuable because you accumulate it over a large period of time. And it can also get very, very large. So what Stream Insight does, it actually gives you, as part of the checkpointing functionality in resiliency, the capabilities to persist that state to disk. And based on that, we are providing you different levels of protection that you can choose from depending on the needs of your Stream Insight application. So let's have a quick look at these different levels of protection that we are providing with the resiliency functionality. The first one is, uh, is very intuitive. We call it exact equivalence. It basically means from your Stream Insight application that is, is experiencing an outage, you're getting exactly the same stream of events on the output side as compared to a system that did not experience an outage. And that's the highest level of guarantee that we can provide to you. The next level down is what we call equivalent events. And it basically means that you're not missing out on any events, even uh, in, a, in a situation where you experience an outage. And you're not getting any wrong results. But you may, in contrast to the first level that we just talked about, you may receive duplicates in the output. Now, there's another level that's, uh, um, uh, that's um, even uh, more intuitive, where we are just simply saying, look, we are guaranteeing to you that the state that you have persisted to disk is recovered after the, uh, after the outage. And that basically helps you to recreate that expensive state but you're not get getting any of these further guarantees that we just talked about for the two other levels. So let's have a quick look at uh, checkpointing behind the scenes. So first of all, as I already mentioned, checkpointing saves a query state to disk, and you are in control when that is happening. As part of the API, we are giving you the functionality to trigger a checkpoint, and you control the frequency depending on the high availability needs of your application. As soon as you trigger such a checkpoint, Stream Insight takes care of saving the consistent state for all of the queries in the system where you are asking for a checkpoint. Once the checkpoint has successfully been written to disk and you experience an outage, Stream Insight will restore that state from disk and load it again as state into the queries that you have checkpointed before. Now, the whole recovery process in that context is coordinated by Stream Insight and um, it also coordinates the different levels of protection that you need. And depending on the level that you have chosen, it may need to interact with the output and the input adapters. Now, one thing that I want to call out that you should re remember in the context of the checkpointing functionality is that checkpointing does not protect you against um, interruptions in the output during an outage. So if you have a downtime period and you're using checkpoint, checkpointing, you will still see um, you will still see interruptions in the output during the time where your system is down. So let's have a quick look at the first area where we have um, made investments in the uh, 2012 release for uh, Stream Insight. And that is really about um, user-defined processing in uh, Stream Insight. So imagine events arriving over time, the green dots that you see on the slide here, and time moving forward. And the functionality that we had in previous releases for Stream Insight 
was that you could split time into uh, windows of constant size and then have the events occur in those windows and do processing for them. However, that's problematic um, for certain application scenarios because you may not know upfront what the right size is going to be for the different windows that you need to use. In order to help you deal with those use cases, we're adding the functionality where you can actually go back arbitrary in time and reason about the state of all these events that have occurred in the past and accumu accumulate it over time. One example where this is important is, for instance, pattern matching, where you do not know upfront at what window sizes these patterns are going to occur. Another example in this context is predictive modeling, where you want to take into account the whole past of events that you have seen in order to predict a trend into the future or to extrapolate future events. So those are examples where uh, more complex event processing is needed. And here on this slide, I'm actually listing a couple of these different use cases and scenarios where we have run into that need. There's a whole area of predictive models around denial of service attacks, bottleneck prediction, or detecting equipment outages, um, pro, uh, proactive uh, condition-based monitoring, and the pattern matching scenarios that we uh, talked about. The way how we are addressing these scenarios in the new Stream Insight release is by a user-defined operator that you can inject at any point into the streams in your query. And now if you're doing a stateful computation, that operator allows you to retain the state between different invocations of that operator. And that's exactly the capability that you need to accommodate these arbitrary temporal ranges of interest. And you can basically manage your own windows over time with that functionality. We're calling that functionality the new user-defined stream operator, or short UTSO, which gives you these capabilities. Let's, have a couple of, uh, let's, let's look at a couple of other improvements in the development experience. So another one that's really a, a, a very basic feature that a lot of you have been asking for is support for nested type structures. With, with that feature, you can actually take C-sharp classes and nest them into other C-sharp classes and use them as stream inside event types. Stream inside in the back then does the mapping for you to its internal flat event representations. And again, the same happens transparently on the output side. Another similar um, improvement is we now support primitive type loads, uh, primitive payloads as types, and also constant payloads. In addition to that, we addressed a couple of limitations that we had in link. So for instance, multiple join and from clauses in the same statement are now supported, richer projection expressions, and support for macros. And there are a couple of other improvements in the link area as well. So let's take a quick look at a demo to uh, uh, illustrate these different capabilities. And I want to also use that demo to introduce you to an Internet of Things scenario, which is a very prominent use case for Stream Insight. And um, to start with a demo, I want to show you a little device that is very interesting because it can connect to the Internet, and it also carries a bunch of sensors, um, most prominently a motion sensor, a temperature sensor, and a light sensor. And we're going, to, uh, we are, we are going to use those sensors and the data that they produce for that demo, for that Internet of Things demo with uh, Stream Insight. OK, let's have a look at the demo real quick. So what you're seeing here on the screen is a dashboard that is showing you the status of a piece of equipment that we are monitoring. And just imagine that this piece of equipment is using the devices that you just saw to capture all sorts of sensor data. And the devices are connected to the internet, and they're sending their sensor data into, um, in, in, into uh, a web server that is running uh, Stream Insight queries in the background to do all the analytics for the equipment monitoring. And what you're seeing here on the screen is a number of different components where the data that's being shown in the components is driven by different Stream Insight queries that we are running in the background. So the first part here down on the left-hand side is where we're getting for each of the devices a timestamp for the sensor reading and then already aggregated data for motion, light, and temperature sensors. And the aggregations that we are using are time-sensitive aggregations where we are basically computing averages over time to smoothen the sensor data values that we're uh, getting from the devices. That's a fairly uh, raw view into the data. Let's jump over to the right-hand side of um, the dashboard. And here you see 
um, a trend line chart that is uh, plotting the motion sensor data for the two different um, devices that I'm showing here in, uh, in, in that demo. And you are actually seeing that one of these devices is, uh, is uh, um, having a very interesting pattern here where occasionally we're seeing spikes in the motion. So some, something is moving in our piece of equipment. And um, again, I'm using a Stream Insight query to, um, to, to uh, identify these patterns. And one of the new features that's uh, very important here is if you are interested in keeping the state around of uh, these patterns that you have discovered over time, then the checkpointing functionality that we just introduced in the last release is really crucial because if you have a system reboot or an outage in between uh, these different spikes, you want to make sure that you still can recover the state and build upon the previous state that, um, that, that you had in the system before the outage happened. So that might, for instance, be important if you're trying to de detect alarm situations when over a certain period of time you uh, happen to see a certain number of these spikes in the motion behavior from the sensors. And that's, uh, for instance, here at the top part of the screen, we can capture these alarms and as, uh, as they happen. And what you want to make sure is that um, you're not losing any of the previous uh, spikes in the sensor value because of, uh, of outages. And that's an example where the new checkpointing functionality is, is really uh, important, really helpful for you. And um, to uh, give you a, a little idea of how the code actually looks behind the scenes, what I want to show to you is um, a little snippet, code snippet, that, um, that is implementing the alarm detection query that's driving the upper part of the dashboard that we were just seeing. And what you see here on the screen is Stream Insight link query code, where we are basically taking in at the top the uh, average values that we have ac accumulated over time and we're correlating those with the threshold for the alarm patterns. And then we're feeding that into a snapshot window that is checking whether a certain number of devices at the same point in time is demonstrating um, it, um, a motion um, above, the, uh, above the threshold. And, and the last query that you're seeing here is the query that is simply checking whether a certain number of devices that exceeds the threshold um, is, uh, is, is, showing, um, uh, is showing a lot of motion. And um, so what all these, the sequence of queries that we just went through uh, shows you is it's a really simple way to implement checking for these alarm conditions across a large number of devices and also taking the temporal uh, patterns into account where we are checking whether at the same point in time there is a large number of devices with enough motion in the system to uh, raise an alarm condition. Now, after the demo, let's uh, recap and uh, quickly sum up um, all the various different um, capabilities and features that we uh, have seen. So the first one, um, and really a key addition to the functionality in the SQL Server 2012 release for Stream Insight, is a resiliency to outages through the checkpointing functionality that Stream Insight provides to you. In addition to that, we made a couple of improvements to the development experience, most notably the user-defined extensions that allow you to do prediction and pattern matching. In addition to that, also the link, uh, the link experience has been improved. A lot of limitations have been removed. And um, as a side, we are with that release embracing .NET 4.0 as a default .NET framework for Stream Insight. A couple of areas that we did not talk about in the previous slides are around manageability. The key features that we added for manageability is for performance counters. Um, you will find when you uh, install Stream Insight and you run your Stream Insight application that you can uh, pull up um, Perfmon in, uh, in Windows and look at performance counters for Stream Insight, such as the memory that's being consumed by the queries uh, in the system and by your application. Also, we are starting to log important administrative events for Stream Insight in, those, in the Windows event log. Besides all that, we also took a, a careful look at the runtime and the implementation of various operator, operators in Stream Insight, and that helped us to improve the latency. That means that as new events arrive in the system and Stream Insight is processing them, you will see the re results emerge from, from the system much more quickly than before in earlier versions. So to conclude, um, I encourage you to get ready for the Internet of Things, as we saw in the demo. Try out Stream Insight 2.0 in Microsoft SQL Server 2012. Thank you all.